for those of you who have uh, seen me talk before, I will, will warn you right now, um, I can talk forever. Um, Stephen in the back of the room has a dark kind of tranquilizer box. He will dart me <laughs> until my time runs out and will drag me out of the room. I have a lot of things to say. To me at least, many of these things are rather profound. Last October, I had this message. My business, part of the business that I work in is strategic consulting. I will work trying to help organizations change their fundamental processes and adopt agile and new methods. I work a lot with upper management in doing this. And in fact, I work from the top of the organization to the bottom of the organization, but I have a tendency, since I have colleagues that work very well down with the individual teams, I have a tendency to work with management, I work with governance organizations, I work with executive planners, I work with product management groups. And this was my message from last October, and that was, you know, an agile team that is in a non-agile environment will not long survive. Eventually, the organization has to mutate to start to metabolize some of the byproducts and some of the culture that the Agile team brings in place. Otherwise, if you continue to have waterfall expectations of an Agile team, it will strangle it. This is actually well documented. There's good studies that indicate that most Agile initiatives will fail inside of 12 to 18 months if you do not end up starting to influence the contextual levels outside of that particular team. This time, I'd like to carry out a slightly different, or from a different perspective, message. Instead of looking from the IT department, from the development team, and looking outward and saying, they have to change. What I'd rather do this time is I'd rather look from the outside, from the organization as a whole, and look at the organization as a whole and at the dynamics that are inside of this. I've spent a lot of time over the last nine months doing exactly that for a number of customers. And I have the same basic conclusion, and that is if we do not all start to share a fundamental set of values and a fundamental vocabulary, we will never solve the problems that we are already suffering. It's not that we will have new problems, but we will not solve the ones we are already suffering. And it starts here. It starts with a clock, which is ticking. If you were here last October, I alluded to this particular concept, and I didn't show you this particular slide. I now want to give it to you more formally. This particular graph is an important part of understanding the economics of Agile techniques. I will not explain the whole graph. If you want to understand it better, I can tell you the whole story in about 15 minutes, you know, and you can see me after the break. But I want to explain one of the key concepts, which is represented by that green curve. And this concept of the half-life of a requirement set. Like radioactive isotopes, requirements have a period of time wherein half of all those requirements become obsolete. In 1980, the half-life of a general requirement set was approximately 8 to 12 years. When I started my career in 1981, um, I worked for the U.S. Department of Defense and the defense contractors, and we built really big systems. And we knew that our systems were going to have lifetimes that were 10, 15, 20 years long. Even in commercial areas, most of those systems in the early 1980s and the late 1970s were very stable. You know, right? The requirements that we had, we knew were long lives, so we had no real problem at that time with the idea of taking 12 months to gather the requirements. Many projects were two and three years long. By the year 2000, the half-life of a requirement set, the time that it takes for half of all the requirements to become obsolete, has shrunk to about two to three years. It is estimated that now the half-life of a requirement set is between 12 and 18 months, and many people think that it is less than 12 months. And that has a really important dynamic that has cropped up over the last five years or so, and that is half of all your requirements are going to be obsolete before your project is over. And that is truly interesting. Do you believe that, by the way? Is the pace of change increasing so much for you that, in fact, by the time you're halfway through the project, you're getting more and more change requests, not because people have necessarily forgotten things. That happens, too. 
that there is never while you're executing because they were overlooked or you didn't think about the implications of certain things, but that fundamentally the marketplace had changed. The need had changed in the time since you started the project. Do you believe it? This is a ticking clock. Now it's not necessarily a time bomb, it's just simply a clock. It's putting some pressure on us. And this is one of the things that is pressuring us to consider something different. In 1980, we didn't have any particular problem with having you know, waterfall approaches that had long analysis processes. We didn't have any particular problem with the idea of having an analysis team that handed off to an implementation team that handed off to a test team because we weren't under that much pressure. Now we are. We have been for the last 15 years feeling this increasing amount of pressure, and the last five ever increasing, to the point now where we're in this odd situation that half of all your requirements may be obsolete by the time you finish the project. How do you deal with that? Where does that problem come from? In the United States in the 1960s, this was an extremely popular cartoon, Pogo. I don't think it probably translated anywhere outside the United States because it was uniquely Southern in its outlook. Uh, it takes place, you know, we have a possum, which is Pogo, and a hedgehog, his friend, called Porcupine. And it takes place in the Okefenokee Swamp, which doesn't sound very attractive, but happens to be one of the most rich wetlands in the world. And for Earth Day, the very first Earth Day in 1971, Walt Kelly wrote this particular cartoon. That quote, we have met the enemy and he is us, has gotten to be extremely famous in the US. When it comes to our businesses and the way we run our businesses these days, when it comes to the pressures that we are under, when it comes to the fact that our requirements are changing, our marketplaces are changing so frequently, we are struggling to keep up with them. If we look for the root causes, we have met that enemy, and he is us. There is not another, there is not some other out there that is causing these problems, although we like to look for those others. Traditionally, we have been at odds with ourselves. If you live in the information technology world, which many of us in this room probably do, we always think of the business folks as being you know, that ugly other. You know, it's those people, they don't understand what we're doing. They keep you know, putting, making unrealistic expectations of us. All right? There's always this sense of otherness. Well, I'm sure that you understand from a business point of view, they feel exactly the same way about us. From the business point of view, they don't believe that we understand what the strategic needs of the business are. They don't believe that we understand that we have to move faster. The mismatch between the demands that the business finds in the marketplace and what they are asking of us and our capacity has just gotten so out of alignment that it has become a crisis situation. It is into this situation, it is into this environment that Agile techniques and Lean techniques are being viewed as being part of the solution. But ultimately, it is not about, from the business point of view, the business points at IT and it says this, you're broken, fix yourselves. All right, I will put enough money in this budget for this year, all right, that you have no excuses, fix yourself. If it takes Lean, if it takes Agile, whatever it takes, fix yourself. Not from that point of view, they're just looking at us as the 